What's up, crypto family? Thank you for tuning back into Crypto Deep Dive. This is your host, Mehdi Farooq, Senior Investment Analyst at Token Metrics. Uh, Today's deep dive will be unique. Last time we covered gaming investment thesis, and this time it's something unique in a way that I'm going to do a primer on one of the most uh, lucrative sectors at the moment, in my opinion, metaverse. So I'm going to break the metaverse down, break down its definition, help you calculate the size of the market and help you uh, kind of see the opportunity there in terms of different sectors available within Metaverse. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the definition of Metaverse. So Metaverse, in my opinion, isn't new, right? Uh, so so I'll just start with this graph. So Facebook um, already was kind of initiated Uh, a project which kind of explored some of the possibilities in Metaverse and they did it through Oculus. Uh, So before Facebook actually announced publicly that they are going to turn their company around and name it Meta and basically will be focusing on Metaverse, just before their announcement, Facebook was actually outperforming as this graph from MacroHive shows. Uh, They are a global macro research firm and and they basically... uh, keep update with some of the big, bigger macro and thematic themes. So they basically this chart is showing you that Facebook stocks were actually outperforming crypto metaverse uh, tokens. But as soon as Facebook mentioned that they're going to rename and focus primarily on meta, Facebook stock actually took a, took a dump and crypto project starts to outperform uh Facebook. Now, this crypto platform index over here captures all the metaverse-based projects. Now, I I thought this theme and this narrative was very interesting, and and I revisited the definition of what metaverse is and why market is kind of behaving like this. So, for me, uh, and even for Facebook, uh, the metaverse is interconnected, experiential three D virtual worlds where people located anywhere in the world can socialize in real time. Now, this is where the Facebook definition of metaverse ends. And for people involved in crypto, we go one step ahead. We basically believe it's all of the above, plus having the chance and having the ability to own these digital realms and digital economies. And this digital representation can be both in the digital as well as in physical world. So this key element, the ownership part of the economies, is what Facebook's definition of metaverse does not incorporate because Facebook would not want to would not want the users to actually own part of some of the digital rent they have created because if users own that, then the profit accrual wouldn't happen to Facebook shareholders and uh, and, <laughs> and the company itself, right? So this is where crypto comes in and this is where crypto outperforms uh, traditional equity, as you can see from here. So I think market also kind of realized that that the Facebook's definition of uh, metaverse wouldn't have this ownership part. And and this also comes, um, this also brings us to the next topic. The next topic is what is Web 3.0? So this is very crucial if you were to define metaverse, right? So in in Web 1.1, we could just read. uh, But in Web 2.0, you had bloggers and content creators. And not only people can consume content on internet, but can uh, add value by writing those content as well. But Web 3 is different. Web 3 is where you can do both things of Web 1 and Web 2. But additionally, you can also own this content. And and. And the interaction is read, write plus ownership. And this is where um, even even if we talk about metaverse uh, and if we talk about Web 3.0, this is where um, crypto has an advantage. Uh, so Facebook, I, I believe, will see the metaverse in terms of Web 2.0 lens, platform-based uh, economies, and crypto is kind of seeing uh, metaverse in terms of organization being network-based and decentralize. So you have uh, this ability to own, ability to have decentralized networks. And this is what uh, 
crypto metaverse will be unique and more and much different from metaverse created by Facebook and Microsoft. And in my opinion, the one created by crypto could eventually win because of this key differentiating factor. And I'll and I'll, I'll reason with you why later on. So before we jump into uh, metaverse, I want to like kind of set context why this was inevitable. Us spending a lot of time in metaverse was inevitable. I feel like within a couple of years, uh, instead of having Zoom calls and instead of just working from home virtually, I believe we'll work at the metaverse with our company colleagues. And I think that will be more productive. But that's that's another argument, right? Uh, let's just look at what were the, some of the current trends that is kind of, it's, it's acting as a continuum for, uh, for metaverse. So at the moment today, as you know, eight hours average, we spend watching TV, playing games or on social media. Now this is, this is a fact. These, this comes from different surveys that have been done, but now assume that we, instead of spending eight hours a day, we spend 12 to 13 hours a day. This is a possibility, especially with COVID variant. I am actually spending 11, 12 hours a day at home because I'm working nine. And then I also have to sleep <laughs> and then also like interact with my friends over social media and so on and so forth. So I am actually spending 12 to 13 hours in Metaverse, but this Metaverse is kind of owned by Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and it's not crypto related. But eventually if it's crypto related, I can see why this time is a possibility for virtually everyone in the world. So when you're spending this much amount of time digitally, it becomes more obvious that, and there is a bull case, it becomes more obvious that we want to spend more money in the digital world than in the physical world. And it's also more ob obvious that we'll care about our social status more within the digital world or online community, right? So this is a bull case for NFTs, and this is also a bull case for ownership-based economies within the metaverse. So if I'm spending so much of my life within the digital realm and within, whether it's te watching television, whether it's um, in social media, what if there was the ability that I can own some of these digital assets and I can own some of my digital identity and my so social status? I can show other people who I'm interacting with for a large part of my life uh, online what my social status is. So this is, this is, if you think about it, this is a bull case for both metaverse based tokens, but also metaverse based NFTs. And I think this is a, this is a trend that has already been here. And I believe some of the progress we do in within metaverse will basically take this further. There's, there are already signs, um, uh, from different states. So I, I took this from uh, Galaxy Digital, right? And they're basically saying that even people who are above age 65, whether it's Gen Z and even kids, uh, kids who are um, below 12 years old, they're spending five hours a day social media. So there are already surveys being done that kind of establishes that we spend more than seven to eight hours a day uh, within digital worlds. Now, this is very, and this, this statistics also shows us uh, that let's say if there was a global virtual world, it will be successful because uh, people, let's say some of the kids who play games, video games, or some of the adults who play video games, they like to spend more money within the economies of the game rather than upfront purchases. So let's say if there's a metaverse and the metaverse itself has an economy of its own, it would make sense that people would sp spend more money inside that economy rather than making up upfront purchase. So this is where the token as well as NFT comes, comes in. So just think of this part, this part of the curve as NFTs, upfront payment for lands within metaverse and this part as different utility within metaverse. So. So going forward, there will be two two sides of the story. People will be spending money in tokens as well as NFTs uh, within the metaverse. But what are the things we can do in metaverse? So if you haven't been uh, to Decentraland or Sandbox, uh, I highly advise you to either check out the trailer on YouTube or actually go and explore what some of these uh, metaverses have to offer. So I did a deep dive. And I can assure you, I was able to see an art gallery, uh, Saudi's um, Southby's 
art galleries there so you can watch and view different nfts there and and basically you also have a price attached and it will take you to open sea uh, to kind of make make sure who the owner is and what and previous nfts they have owned and so on and so forth in metaverse you also have uh, business offices uh, make it out um binance have already established offices there I believe some of the uh, companies like Atari has already established an office in Metaverse. I don't know if it was Sandbox or it was Decentraland, uh, but they're already establishing offices uh, there. Um, you can play video games and, and also have access to casino. So let's say you play different casino related games, whether it's poker, whether it's roulette, and whoever wins uh, also gets to earn uh, digital tokens in terms of the native currency of the Metaverse. You also have uh, digital shopping. Uh, if you go on Mana, you go you go on uh, Boson's protocol digital mall. You'll be able to uh, buy NFTs and buy physical NF uh, physical items, and those physical items will be represented as NFT. So Metaverse allows you that opportunity. Metaverse also has this element of advertisement, where let's say. Um, Physic in physical world because of inflation, if the advertisement uh, price goes higher and metaverse starts to grow, uh, you'll see a lot of corporation advertising inside there. Uh, you can also have like sponsored content. Let's say you can have a podcast where um, uh, you are presenting a podcast and people basically attend that podcast and they have to uh, basically uh, pay a fee in order to listen to there, and it could be presented as a theater. Uh, so yeah, so you can also have that. You can also have live events like concerts, music, DJs. And in fact, I was able to attend one of the concerts in, in Mana. And, um, a few days ago, I saw a video of somebody dancing within a net nightclub in Sandbox. So these are uh, definitely some of the things there. Um, there is another interesting development where you can establish digital schools in Metaverse, where children, for example, can um, attend those schools and they'll get proof of attendance. And those proof of attendance can be held as NFTs. And let's say that, that NFT will basically unlock certain things in the real world. For example, some certain points or certain uh, monetary value, which the children can use to kind of spend in, let's say, Amazon, buy some of the books or whatnot. So you, you kind of see a lot of, physical world items and physical world amenities being built on a metaverse and it's not it's not crazy at all um, so even if all of this seems kind of freaky and insane to you which i personally don't see i can definitely see some of these applications uh, you can also view from organized organization standpoint that uh, even if even if you think metaverse is kind of nascent you can always view them as like websites with the 3d format so even the domain name, uh, some of the some of the matter like Binance, for example, would be more than happy to buy a land in digital world um, in in metaverse and pay a couple of millions of dollar and just have their website uh, additional website format, right? So you anybody can visit the business office there, view around, and it takes them to their website. So for them, uh, it also kind of makes sense. So if you think metaverse is stupid. Uh, you can even think of it as as like extension or a 3D format of your website, and even in that case, it's it does have some utility. Uh, so those who think metaverse is just a hoax, um, I have to remind them again that uh, this is the beginning of a new trend, and some of the applications that will come in the future um, are just absolutely insane, and 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 some of the things we cannot even absorb and digest at the moment, or we are not even aware of. So these are some of the things I mentioned. So digital art, <laughs> digital concert, somebody strolling around a digital park. So so yeah, like interesting applications. So some of these applications, as I mentioned, um, according to Galaxy Digital uh, Report, uh, it represents a huge opportunity. So at the moment, we are in few billions uh, in terms of the total market, total addressable market for uh, Metaverse. But going forward, we'll have $1.4 addressable market. And this will be broken down into advertisement being the major chunk, social commerce, digital events, hardware, and developers and creators. So hardware, I would assume, would be AR and VR headsets and some of the physical NFTs. And developers and creators 
uh, could be part of the creation economy within the metaverse. So, so in terms of total addressable market, you have a huge opportunity, and 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 also huge revenue earning opportunities if you kind of explore the sector. So, at the moment, uh, if you kind of conclude, um, then Mana and Decentraline, some of the metaverses right now, uh, we just have fifty thousand users using it. But on the on the other hand, Facebook have more than two point nine billion users using Facebook. So if we kind of look at the catch up and let's say next decade, <laughs> the the amount of amount of uh, people migrating could be crazy, and this could be a hundred x potential in terms of user growth. Not hundred x, like a <laughs> crazy number. If you divide two point nine billion by fifty thousand, that's the crazy number you get in terms of multiple expansions. Uh, so yeah, even if you compare it to decentralized finance, it's 3.4 billion users and 3.4 uh, million users, whilst in metaverse we only have 50,000 users. So there's a huge catch-up play uh, involved as well, in my opinion. So in my opinion, this is my conclusion. Uh, metaverse is a digital universe that <laughs> moves beyond internet we know today. Now, digital globe, um, Galaxy Digital said it's a $1.4 trillion economy, uh, metaverse. Uh, so the addressable market is huge. Uh, but I feel like Web 3.0 and metaverse itself can disrupt some of the Web 2.0 companies. So in my uh, opinion, it can actually be more than $15 trillion market, market opportunity. And, and some of those estimates, in my opinion, were conservative. So that just kind of shows to you and gives you kind of um, of an overview of how bullish I am when it comes to uh, Metaverse. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the breakdown of the Metaverse, my views on, on Metaverse. And, and it kind of makes sense uh, if you want to explore uh, Metaverse, whether through buying a digital land or buying some of the tokens and kind of playing around with it. I would highly encourage you to do that because I think the future will be relevant to Metaverse. And I absolutely feel all the business meetings and interaction within a couple of years will move towards Metaverse. So it's, it kind of makes sense to kind of get yourself used to it. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, this week's video on, on a primer on Metaverse and, and me breaking down different uh, trends within Metaverse. Uh, I, I hope to see you next time.